I've been busy expanding my Wi-Fi coverage, not only inside my house, but outside as well. But what makes it even more unusual is I have no electricity, no cables of any kind down at my field. So I needed to expand my network wirelessly without having any kind of fixed power source. And here is my solution to the problem. This is a fully solar powered internet Wi-Fi station. The only electricity it gets is from a solar panel, going into a battery and then feeding into a small controller along with some network equipment. But what makes this project so unusual is that I'm running entirely on direct current or DC power. The reason I didn't just put one of those EcoFlow or another power station because when you're running AC devices, there is an overhead to using one of those typical power stations. Just having those AC outlets on could quickly eat up the battery in a few days. Now remember, I'm trying to put Wi-Fi all the way down in my field about 500 feet away, so I'm gonna to need to use two different access points. The primary access point is gonna be located on the corner of my garage. This will be the closest to the field that I can get. This one can be run over power over ethernet. So once I get this thing mounted up, I've just gotta plug the cable in the bottom. And while you could use something like silicone to seal the hole, I'm gonna use a better choice called duct seal. The benefit here is it's actually removable. So if something should go wrong or the access point burns out, I don't have to tear the side off of my garage or pull off paint. Here I'm using a TP-Link wireless access point. This supports mesh mode. That means this thing can provide Wi-Fi coverage right around the outside of the garage, but it can also beam a second channel out to another access point to extend my signal. When you want to extend your Wi-Fi, you have two options. Range extenders are really popular. They're sometimes called boosters, but you really don't want to use them. Most boosters cut your bandwidth in half, and they can even force you to create a second SSID. Now that may work if you're just trying to reach one extra room away, but you lose so much with them, and a better option is to go with a mesh-based system. Mesh does something really amazing. You can add as many access points as you want in your network, and they communicate with each other two different ways. The first is by using an internal link. That's designated here by the blue line. That handles all of the intercommunications between the access points, but it doesn't take away from your bandwidth. But the other huge benefit is it all works off of a single SSID, so your devices will always connect to the best access point that's nearby, and you don't have to worry about duplicate networks. And remember, every mesh access point does two things. First, it creates Wi-Fi coverage just in the general vicinity around itself, but additionally, it can also create that second link to another mesh-based access point. And then that access point also creates an area around itself to provide Wi-Fi coverage. And in my case, that's gonna be down in my field. You could use this same setup just to get a link out to your garage, shed, anywhere on your property that you want additional coverage. This is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from the company Litime. And this battery is capable of literally thousands of charge cycles before it loses any of its capacity. But additionally, I'm gonna need something to put it in. I actually went ahead and got their battery case as well. Now there's plenty of extra room here. It allows me to connect the terminals of the battery from the inside to these outside terminals. Normally you'll see these boxes used in places like boats with trolling motors because guys can charge their battery up, take it with them with the handle and it makes it super portable. But for me, in addition to the inside wiring, I've also got a built-in circuit breaker, an on-off switch, and even a voltage gauge. This is gonna allow me to eliminate some of those components from my build and just make this go a lot quicker. I want this Wi-Fi repeater station to be completely self-contained. So to manage that, I'm gonna put this solar panel in. This is just a basic rigid 50 watt panel along with this small solar controller. Without a controller, you can't manage your power properly or even the connections. Now here's the access point that I'm gonna use down at the station. This is the same TP-Link outdoor access point that I used in the garage. And now for the biggest challenge I faced, these devices wanna be powered using power over ethernet, but that's where I had an immediate problem. Power over ethernet requires 48 volts of direct current. Your solar panel is typically putting out a lot less than that and it will vary. I needed to power a network switch that could regulate the output. There are almost no network switches on the market that can do this. I searched for almost two weeks and finally found this LinoVision product. It sells for 99 bucks and it can do exactly what I need. I'm using this project box that I had sitting around and I'm gonna mount the small solar controller and the network switch. This project box is pretty cool. It's got this sort of pegboard that allows you to easily screw your devices into, and then you use the two larger screw holes to mount it right into the back of the box. I don't want anything too high tech looking, so I decided to hide all this equipment inside this tiny garden shed, but I wanted to disguise it a bit more, so I enlisted some free labor to paint this thing up to match my house and garage.
And before I bring this thing down to the field, I wanted to try to dry fit as much stuff as possible, and I'm gonna begin with the solar panel. Now I certainly could have bought some fancy clips, but there's really no need. I put three screws in the roof, and that should hold the panel in place securely enough for the area that I live. Next, I went and mounted the box into the back of the cabinet. Now you should note some solar controllers put out quite a bit of heat, so I'm not planning to close that door. I'm just gonna use it as a way to shield any water that might somehow find its way inside that shed. The only wiring I can do before I bring this thing down to the field is to connect the load ports on the solar controller to the network switch. Now I needed to just get everything mounted and set up. Unfortunately, I don't have any extra help here, so I just muscled this thing into a good location. I'm gonna move it around and see what works for me and provides enough charging capacity to keep this thing going. The access point alone uses around 15 watts and that small network switch will also consume some I wanna get the wireless access point mounted on the outside of this shed. And now it's time to make the final connections, but I wanted to share these close-ups so you can see exactly what I'm doing. On your solar controller, you're gonna have multiple ports. You'll always have one for your solar panels, you'll have one for your battery, and then one for your load. I'd also recommend that you use these devices called ferrules. I made an entire video about these, and these essentially turn stranded wire into solid connections. Now even though there's a bit of wire sticking out the end, you can trim that off, it doesn't have to be flush your terminal connectors are actually gonna connect in about the middle of those ferrules. This will make it a lot cleaner and quite a bit easier when I'm down there making these final connections. I'm gonna start by connecting up the access point. Now keep in mind the access point is waterproof, but that cable port on the bottom isn't. They give you this included ferrule, and once you squeeze everything together, it makes the network connection and the access point totally waterproof. I need to run those cables inside the shed, so I'm also gonna use this small bulkhead connector. This just gives you a pass-through that puts the cables into the building or structure you're wiring into a lot cleaner, and it does provide waterproof connections. Now keep in mind, this entire shed is not really waterproof, it's just water resistant. And I use the second port on that bulkhead connector to route my solar panel wiring through into the shed. And finally, I've just got to connect up my battery and the solar panels. Now the panels came with a cable and I got a small extension, added the ferrules on the end and put those right into the controller. But now I needed to connect the battery. So I use this homemade cable, connect the positive and the negative right into the controller ports marked battery and I should be ready to go. And this is exactly why I love this battery box. Hit the power switch and it's on, but if something's wrong, I can switch it right off without disconnecting any wires. Now immediately you can see that the controller is lit up and my network switch also has power, but I still don't have anything running. This is where the TP-Link stuff really shines. Using their Omada system, which is essentially a free controller package that they give you, you can go right in and immediately I can see that outdoor access point isn't connected. All I've got to do is select it, the system will do what they call adopting it. That gives it the settings it needs so that it can join your network. Now this system is awesome because if you've got a guest network set up, anything else, the Omada system broadcasts all those settings to your access point for you automatically. And now to really test this thing out, I drove about another 100 feet away from my newly built station and I'm getting about 58 meg down and almost 48 meg up. This is an amazing result considering I'm now about 700 feet away from my garage. But when you use mesh-based access points, the benefits are even greater because I could add additional stations, whether they were powered by solar or if they could be plugged in and they would continue to extend my signal. So you could cover an almost unlimited area using this technology. If you wanna live in a rural place, you've got to learn how to do things differently. And this little solar powered system is working beautifully for me. So feel free to comment below. Let me know what you would do differently or you might even consider using a setup like this for yourself.